we're going to show you how to put together a Dane bed, uh, one of our styles of Murphy beds today. Um, first thing I want to say about these is it's pretty intimidating looking, but it's actually pretty straightforward. It's just all the parts are sort of foreign looking, which is why we do these videos so that you can just see the parts rather than me trying to give you the technical names for everything. So um, at the end of this video, uh, I'll give you an 800 number and feel free to call me if you have any problems. Um, but you should be able to walk yourself through this pretty well. Um, we're going to assemble a Dane bed and then we're going to show how the bookcases attach after the fact. So uh, what we're going to do is identify all the parts and then we're going to identify all the hardware and then we're going to get into the cabinet construction and then we'll get into the actual bed itself and show you how that drops in and then after that we'll do the bookcases. So starting here we have two sides. There is a left and a right side and if you'll notice at the bottom corner this is a base molding cutout so that's the back of the cabinet. That's to skip over the back of your base mold. Um, so as I said there's definitely a left and a right. And let's go ahead and put these on the ground. Um, go ahead and set those on the ground. We're going to just lay this out as we move along here. I think it's probably going to be better. So you want to have them the bottom of the cabinet is where these leveling feet are. You want to have that towards the wall and you want to have the front of the cabinet or the sides where the notches are not the front of the cabinet facing each other. The next part is uh, the roof and obviously with the lighting this is the roof. This is the inside of the roof and flip, spin it around so they can see the lighting harness is all sort of gathered there on the top and that's the top of the top. Um, I'll hold this piece. It's fine. The next part is the footboard. Yeah. And that's the small piece that goes at the front of the cabinet down. Uh, Kevin, point where that's going to go. Yeah, right there. It's going to connect there. The last piece is the um, headboard. And this actually goes to the back of the cabinet over here. Right there. And show them the top part of that. There's a button switch and again all the wiring harnesses are behind it on the back side um, and the electrical components here just plug into each other and we'll go through that at one point. Um, so the first thing we want to do is just start assembling the case and we're going to do it on the floor. This is how you should do it. The first thing you're going to do is uh, you're going to need a uh, flathead standard screwdriver. Um, we have these quick connectors here. Um, so the first thing you're going to do, go ahead and grab the side, pull it up, is and it's a good thing to have two people doing this just because it's uh, large. He's going to insert down plastic into the clear plastic and he's going to hold it tight and true and he's going to give that screw head in the center uh, a turn clockwise and it's a 180 degree turn or half a turn and it, it's a cam and it locks it in place and that's all there is to that. So that as you can see this is going to go very quickly. Same thing on the other side. Make sure you're parallel. Okay, next we can do the headboard. I'll give you a hand with that. Hector, you go ahead and take that. And again, it just drops in. Now make sure you don't drop it. It's very fragile at this point. Got that? Okay. And I'll just turn mine here. It has a positive stop. When you're turning the screw, it definitely stops at a point. Last part is the footboard, which is at the bottom front of the cabinet. And there's really only one way these things can go on. All right, let's see if you can get in there. Okay. 
That's good. All right. Um, we're going to go ahead and do the wiring now just because it's here and it's in the way. What we've done here is we've actually grooved the back edge of the cabinet to receive the wire so you don't have wires running down the wall. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the lights and put that wire in this groove and we're going to come out here at the headboard and we're going to plug it into the switch which is right here and then from there from the switch this just simply plugs into the wall and that's all there is to it you can see Kevin feeding feeding it down in that back groove just take your time with it, it should just drop in There's a small notch where you turn into the headboard here. All right, so we have our, you have your connection here, and we have the on-off switch here, which this wire simply will route itself down the rest of the cabinet. This plug will actually go into this switch. So the lighting comes down to the switch, from the switch down to this shutoff safety switch, and then straight into the wall. It's all just plug-in type uh, operation. Nothing, nothing more than plugging it in. The uh, cabinet actually is ready to be stood up, um, which I think we're almost ready to do, actually. Let me, uh, let's get into the mechanism here. The bottom of the cabinet, and Edwin, I think you're going to have to come over here and take a close-up shot. The bottom of the cabinet, this is a subfloor. This is what holds the metal mechanism, and this ties, transitions the metal mechanism into the case itself. And down here, we have a route, and that subfloor falls right into that route very simply. And the leveling feet are designed to adjust the rack or handle any irregularities in the floor. I think what we're going to want to do is um, stand it up and for this, dem for this demonstration. We're going to stand it up and set it on the subfloor. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to stand the cabinet up and we're going to set it on the subfloor and then we're going to show you a couple things about leveling the case. Yeah, just leave it straight here. Try not to pinch the wires when you stand the case up. Stand the case up nice and even. Don't let it rack. Okay, go ahead. Kevin, you're almost on. There you go. Yeah, pull this forward. There you go. Mm-hmm. There. All right. So there's a bit of play. What we want to do is get the subfloor flush to this back. Um, baseboard cutout. <clears throat> the, uh, the next thing we want to do for this is we want to hang the doors. And then after that we're going to rack the cabinet until it's level and then we're going to attach the cabinet to the wall. So the next step is to get the doors hung without letting the cabinet fall forward. It's going to be very front heavy. So somebody needs to monitor this from falling over at this point. This is sort of a tricky point. We have uh, bifold doors. Go ahead and grab, uh, grab those. And in terms of the hardware for these, it is a 5 8 inch, what's called a 5 8 inch number 7. It's a 5 8 inch long number 7 diameter screw, small. 
uh, for these hinges. Obviously this lock rail is towards the bottom where the handles are. The hinges are uh, 270 degree hinges, which if you don't have bookcases, allow a full wrap. Um, they'll completely wrap around the sides. Kevin, here you go. Got a whole pile of them. There are holes already established for you. Someone needs to just lift the door, align it on the holes. Um, there are three screws per hinge. Two of them are adjustable. So the first thing you should do is put one in an adjustable screw hole, set another one down below, check your heights, and then start locking them in uh, progressively after that. So for now, he's just putting two screws in, actually loosely. Um, and we are using a screw gun on this, but we also, when we fine tune it, we'll use just a regular hand screwdriver. You think you got it? Here, Hector, pull back. Pull back a little bit. He's got it. It's done. The biggest part here, and let me show you this. If you let go, the cabinet will come off the wall. So you do have to hold. You do have to hold this door and hold the cabinet on the wall. And the reason why we can't attach the cabinet just yet is because we need the doors to tell us how it's racked in, true or not. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to close this temporarily. And it will stand now if the door is closed. So this is how you get two people doing this instead of three. He's going to do the other side. I'm just going to wait for him to finish. Okay, so go ahead and close these doors. Now, this is not level, and all it takes to get level is to put position it like that. So this would be true and plumb, where this is even. And that's basically what you're looking for at this point. Um, Let's show you how to attach the cabinet to the wall. We have a series of 
brackets, just simple L brackets. We have some short screws which go into the roof of the cabinet. And we have some long screws which actually are going into the studs in the wall. The minimum is two brackets on a cabinet. Um, we prefer to get three um, if possible. Obviously it depends on if it's a full or a queen or if you've got 16 inch on centers or 24 on centers. Uh, thanks. We're going to use a stud finder, which you can get at a hardware store or you can use the old hammer pounding on the drywall trick. Uh, you definitely want to hit studs here. If you don't hit studs, then a hollow wall anchor is a must. Um, if you have any questions on that, please call us, but this is pretty straightforward. So what Kevin's going to do is he's going to find a stud up there using a stud finder and he's going to set an L bracket directly below it, mounted into the wall, mounted into the roof of the cabinet, checking the tops of those doors to make sure that they're level. Um, if you miss by a little bit, it's okay at this point. You can always shift the bottom of the cabinet still uh, to compensate for that. So uh, don't worry if it's a little off because you can adjust it later. Now, make sure your cabinet is tight on the wall. <laughs> oh, and obviously, you'll need a ladder. Okay. All right. Move this out of the way. Now then. So here's your cabinet. These magnets are very strong. They're designed to be that way. But as you can see, if you don't have bookcases, you can in fact wrap the doors all the way around the cabinet. Um, the next thing is the uh, subfloor. I want to show you how we attach that. Um, most of this should be close-up work, I think, so if you want to come up. Okay, so first off, we have our power, which simply needs to plug into the wall. I just want to get it out of the way for now. So I'm going to set this. back here, and I'm going to slide it through the base cutout over here, and you can just pull that down just to get it out of the way, that's fine. All right, now what we have here is we have leveling feet in the front and the back, and we're going to be adding in an L bracket here, which will lock in the position. If the doors are out of adjustment still, you can adjust this leveling foot to take up the slack and you turn it up or turn it down until you get the effect on the doors that you want. Um, it's important you take your time on this step because uh, once you lock it in, it's pretty much solidified for a while. It's, it's difficult to undo it. Um, now this has uh, already been set up, so we, we have in fact taken the front leveling feet and we've turned them to get the cabinet to lean back correctly, the correct amount. There's some play in the front. And what I mean by that is that with the cabinet attached at the top, you just want to take the slack out of this foot right there just when it makes contact with the subfloor and let me check this side yeah okay so you crank it up or crank it down now Kevin's gonna go ahead and run the screws to lock in the angle braces Uh, 
Um, so while, while Hector's finishing up the uh, attachment of the L brackets here, I want to discuss the lighting. I've plugged it into the wall and I want to check to see if it's working. This is a three level touch dimmer. You have low, medium, high, and then off. Okay, so the next part of this is uh, assembly and installation of the mechanism. Um, now this mechanism is assembled. There are actually separate instructions in the boxes for assembly of the mechanism. They're pretty straightforward. It's, uh, let's uh, go ahead and stand this up. What you see on the top, the blue, is the foundation that is screwed on underneath here. Notice we have these straps for the mattress, which are captured right here. The mechanism is basically just a series of bolts and uh, L-shaped beams. Stabilizer, pull that stabilizer out, right? And this is actually what's called the stabilizer rod, which attaches down below. I'll show you in a minute what that is. This is the foot assembly of the bed, and it has an adjustable leveling foot at the bottom of it. So what we've done is we've built up the mechanism, we've attached the foundation, along with the mattress uh, hold down straps. The unit that's in the cabinet uh, is going to be coming to you as a one piece unit. Um, so it's all bolted to the subfloor, it's ready to go. All they have to do at this point is pick it up and drop it on the horseshoe shaped uh, rack inside the cabinet. This large pin that you see down here is what's going to be the main pivot point. So you want to sort of bring it in and kick it back to you guys, to yourselves a little bit. You want to angle it outside. There you go. And you want to go over the horseshoe, right, and drop it straight down on the cradle, like so. Right. Once you've done that, get your stabilizing rods sort of free and clear. What I have here is some additional hardware. These are the, the bolts, the nuts, and the bushings for the stabilizer rod attachment. Take what you need. Um, take what you need, and I'll give you those. Uh, uh, Edwin, zoom in on this. The arrangement is you have the bolt first, the stabilizing rod, which is the rod that runs from the head of the foot, then the bushing, then it goes through the horseshoe shaped bracket that's part of the, the uh, subfloor assembly, and then the nut. Now the nut um, is a nylon uh, threaded nut, so it means that it won't loosen up. You do not want to over tighten this. You just want it uh, close to snug. You actually want it a little loose because it's, it's just a pivot point. It's not something that needs to be totally tight. The same applies up here at this connection. This should be somewhat loose up here. If you'll notice here, there's just a little bit of wiggle room. It's not real loose, but it's also not, not tight in any way. Carefully, for the first time, let's go ahead and lower this down. You're going to grab this bar. Now there's no springs on this, so it's heavy. It's very heavy. But I just want to check everything to make sure it looks correct before I proceed. Okay, so the next couple things that need to happen is the mattress should go on and the springs, the counterbalancing springs should go on. Um, we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Let's grab this mattress. I'm going to... Uh, now make sure that the mattress is tight at the headboard, that metal bracket up there. And whenever you close a bed up, 
you should always have the strap on the bed. Snug it down. Doesn't have to be super tight, but it shouldn't flop around in the in the cabinet. Now it's even heavier. Okay, so we have these counterbalancing springs. Let me borrow one of those. They're very heavy duty, and they are a little tricky to put on, but we've learned a few things over the last 30 years of messing around with these, so we'll show you. First thing is, get yourself a really big screwdriver. <laughs> now, the attachment point is a hole in the bracket near the floor and then a hole here. So the first thing you do is actually attach it to the hole down below. And if you have trouble with one side, try another side. See, that one just went right in. Now the trick here is to do this. Are you seeing, are you catching this? Okay. Now watch what happens. I go up and I fish it right in the hole and it's in. Uh, if you do that a couple thousand times, it'll be easy. Kevin, let me borrow another one. I'll show you exactly how to do that again. I'm gonna hook it in the, uh, the hole in the bottom bracket and then I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put this here and I'll put this here and I'm gonna pull up and fish it right into the hole. It's really just that easy. Let's just keep going. Yeah. Now generally, these units take six springs. Sometimes they'll take eight. You're always provided eight, but more is not necessarily better. So what you want to do is you want to try it with five or six and see how the bed responds. The more springs that you put on it, the more stress you're exerting on the bed. You get too many springs and the bed will actually pop up off the ground. So you can put too many springs on. Go ahead and pull it down. Should be almost feather light now. Go ahead and let it go. Let's see what that is. I'm going to say that that's enough springs, six springs, and this is a full size with a with an inner spring mattress. Um, if you go with a Tempur-Pedic mattress, it's obviously a lot heavier. You're going to want to put all eight springs on. Um, that's it. The bed is uh, in the cabinet. The next thing is to close the doors up. And if you have side cases, this is the next step. I'm going to place the cabinets next to the wall unit and you want to push them back as far as you can. We will be providing these brackets that we've actually had made up for us and these are just clamps that go at the top. Um, it clamps the two cases together and you tighten the screw with a screwdriver. Um, just keeps the cases tight together. And one for each side. There's a the screwdriver. Okay, now I'm noticing that the cabinet did in fact shift a little bit here. We're a little uneven right here. And since I've already attached it at the top, um, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and adjust the bottom, swing the bottom 
one way or the other. And Kevin, you want to make that adjustment? We're just going to push the cabinet one way or the other. It's fine. Until you get the effect that you want. If you have a hardwood floor, you're going to want to put some L-brackets down in the bottom corners, even into the baseboard. A little more. One more, right there. Even into the baseboard to keep the cabinet from walking. Um, if it's on a hardwood floor, all this cabinet through vibration will shift and the doors will continually be coming out of alignment. So it, especially if it's on a hardwood floor, uh, attach a single L bracket down near the bottom, either into the base molding or into a stud, just to hold the bottom from shifting side to side. Uh, the next thing is just to set the shelves in the uh, units. We have our standard shelf pins. These units, you see them? Okay. The units come with four adjustable shelves. And uh, they can be placed anywhere. We do have the one set of fixed shelves here. And that's pretty much it for a Dane bed setup. Uh, if you have any questions, you can feel free to call me. Um, my name is Mark Gatterdam, and the shop's toll-free phone number is 1-877-999-9663. Uh, good luck, and thanks for your uh, patronage.